What's up everybody? Welcome to Shark Jets. I'm Skid Viz. Uh, today I wanted to talk about the differences in developing for the Oculus Quest and the Go versus the Rift. Um, as I'm sure you know, the Oculus Quest and Go have more in common with something like the Google Cardboard in that they're basically an Android device that's just been, you know, super glued to the front of the, the device here. So because of that, there's a lot of things that it can't do that its big brother can do. Um, and there are some uh, optimizations that you can do inside of Unity to make your game run better. Uh, so luckily for us, Oculus put together some documentation to tell us what to do. So we're going to go ahead and run through that real quick. And uh, in the description, there's a links to a cheat sheet so that you can just uh, print that out and keep that nearby whenever you want to start a new mobile game or change your game to be more mobile friendly. So let's get started. All right, first things first, as we discussed, the Oculus Quest and Go are both Android devices. So you wanna make sure that Unity is configured for that. So when you install Unity, make sure you add the modules for Android support. That will include the SDK and the NDK, which will let you build and deploy to your Oculus Quest Android device. Once you're done with that, inside the project, you'll go to File, Build Settings, switch over to Android. We want to change one thing here, and that's the texture compression. You want to set that to ASTC. And then we'll switch to that platform. And then the next thing we'll do is go into Player Settings. And we'll start off at Resolution and Presentation. So in here, we'll have to change a few things. Uh, we want to make sure that use 32-bit display buffer is checked. We want to also make sure that disable depth and stencil is unchecked. And then we'll scroll down over to other settings. And we want to change the color space to linear. And when we do that, we'll get a, a warning message. Um, We'll take care of that in a second. You want to make sure that Auto Graphics API is unchecked. And Android doesn't work well with the Vulkan API, so we'll remove that if it's there. And we want to use OpenGL ES3. So if that's not listed there, you can add it over here on the side. That's what we'll be using. And then we'll scroll down a little bit further, and we want static batching to be checked. And we want dynamic batching to also be checked. And we want GPU skinning also checked. Graphics jobs unchecked. Scroll down a little more. And we want to set the scripting backend, which is currently set to mono. We want to set that to IL2 CPP if that's not set up on yours. Once that's set, we'll scroll down a little bit further down to optimization and we want to check pre-bake collision meshes. And we also want to check the keep loaded shaders alive. We want to make sure that optimize mesh data is also checked. And then while you were uh, debugging, you want to make sure to enable the internal profiler. But you don't want to have that checked when you're deploying your application. Uh, the next thing we'll do is come down here to the XR settings. And we also, of course, want to make sure that virtual reality is supported. And if we don't have the uh, Oculus SDK there, just make sure that that's added in there. And lastly here, we'll want to change the stereo rendering mode to single pass. And then we are good to go on this part of things. We'll go over to audio up the top and we want to set the DSP buffer size to good latency. And then if you have the Oculus integration installed, you'll want to set that here, the Spatializer plugin. There's a special Oculus Spatializer that you can just select from here. And so you'll want to make sure to do that. And then we'll switch down here to quality. And 
here's where it gets a little interesting. Um, these are all the different quality modes for the different operating systems, download, Windows, whatever. You wanna come in here and uncheck all these other ones for Android, except for medium. It might also say um, simple in some instances of Unity, but we want this middle one here, medium or simple. And uh, we wanna set the pixel light count to one. We want to make sure uh, anostropic textures are disabled. And we want to set the anti-aliasing to four times multi-sampling. So that's down here. As far as shadows are concerned, we want hard shadows only. So we've got hard shadows only. Uh, then there's this thing down here they call skin weights. In some versions of Unity, it says bone weights. We want to set this to two bones or less. As far as vertical sync, we can change that to don't sync because Oculus handles its own vSync. And then we'll go up to graphics and we'll wanna disable all these defaults. And we wanna set all the standard shader quality, we wanna set them to low on all three tiers. We also want to set the rendering path to forward on all three tiers if they're not already set. And then the real-time global illumination CPU usage, which is a mouthful, should also be set to low on all three tiers. And that is really all there is to it. Now you have uh, everything set up the way Oculus wants you to set it up. Oh, we have one more issue that we forgot all about, or I forgot. And that was that error message under other settings, this linear color space, blah, blah, blah. And that is because the version of Android that we're supporting is too low. So right down here, the minimum API level should be Android 6 Marshmallow API level 23 or higher. And as you can see, that makes that error go away. Okay, as you can see, that's... Uh, Hopefully not too much to change. And uh, as always, there's the, the PDF link in the descriptions so that you can print that out and uh, have that at the ready next time you need to do all these things. Um, if you found this episode helpful or useful, please make sure to like, subscribe. And if you'd like to keep these going, uh, you can also join my Patreon. Links in the description, as always. Thanks again for watching. See you next time.